everyone welcome to the next session on finite element analysis in this session we are going to discuss about isoparametric subparametric and superparametric elements that are used for meshing in fea the terms isoparametric subparametric and superparametric are often used in the context of finite element analysis which is a numerical technique for solving engineering problems related to structural thermal fluid and other physical phenomena these terms describe different approaches to the formulation of finite elements in fea first we'll discuss about isoparametric elements we we'll first see the definition isoparametric elements use the same shape functions to interpolate both the geometry that is the spatial coordinates and the field variables example displacements temperatures advantages isoparametric elements are computationally efficient and accurate because they use the same set of shape functions for both geometry and field variables leading to a more accurate representation of the deformation and other physical quantities limitations isoparametric elements may encounter difficulties in handling certain types of degeneracies such as those occurring in nearly inverted or highly distorted elements we have already seen these kind of isoparametric elements when we were discussing about quadrilaterals having four nodes wherein you have derived the shape function so you can go through that same derivation you will understand that it is also an isoparametric element if you talk about this isoparametric element that you see in the figure this is eight noded isoparametric element if you recollect we have already done the derivation for a noded serendipity element in fea here you can see that this dots indicate nodes used for defining geometry so there are total 8 of them triangle represents the nodes used for defining displacements so these are the nodes where you are going to figure out the displacement so accordingly you will have eight shape functions for the same and when you have eight shape functions you can calculate the displacements corresponding at these points So this is called as isoparametric element, where the number of nodes defining the geometry will be equal to the number of nodes defining the displacement. It is not necessary always displacement; it could be displacement, temperature, or any other field variable. Next, we will talk about subparametric elements. Subparametric elements use different sets of shape functions for interpolating the geometry and the field variables. advantages subparametric elements can be more robust in handling certain types of element distortions or irregularities they may be less sensitive to mesh distortions compared to isoparametric elements limitations however subparametric elements may sacrifice some computational efficiency and accuracy compared to isoparametric elements here you would know why it is compromising on the efficiency and the accuracy the reason is you can see that these dots indicate the nodes for defining geometry that is eight of them and triangle represents the nodes used for defining displacement so displacement is defined only at four points so you know only four shape functions and the rest four is not know because of which you will not be able to compute the displacement at all the points so we would prefer using isoparametric elements in case of any analysis and not go for subparametric elements next we will talk about superparametric elements definition superparametric elements use more nodes for interpolating the field variables than for interpolating the geometry in other words they introduce additional nodes for the field variables you can see in the diagram here the dot indicates the nodes used for defining geometry that is 4 and the triangle represents the nodes used for defining displacement that is 8 so field variables are represented at eight places for finding displacement or temperature which is not required because say we have a quadrilateral with only four nodes 
So what is the use of finding for eight of them? Advantages: Superparametric elements can provide higher accuracy in representing the field variables, especially in regions with high gradients or rapid changes. So this is an additional use. And if you do not want to find at a certain place, but then also you can find. So obviously it will be of use to you. Limitations: The use of additional nodes for field variables may increase computational cost and complexity. Superparametric elements are less common than isoparametric or subparametric elements. So even though we may use subparametric elements at times, superparametric is very very rarely used in case of forming elements for a particular body. Let's discuss about the key points in practice. Isoparametric elements are the most widely used due to their efficiency and accuracy. However, the choice of element type depends on the specific characteristics of the problem being solved, and in certain situations, subparametric or superparametric elements might be preferred for their advantages in handling specific challenges. To so say, if you want to figure out the displacement at nodes which are not even required. Or maybe not defined, and it is possible that the stress displacement or temperature is maximum in that zone itself. So in that case, you can go for superparametric element. And superparametric element is also used, say, if you have a little lesser computation efficiency of the hardware. So in that case, you can go for superparametric elements. Otherwise, in most of the cases, isoparametric element is used because it is the balanced one between the sub and superparametric element. So, with this, I end the session. I hope you have understood the concept of isoparametric, subparametric, and superparametric elements used in FEA. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you. Thank you.